Well, you know, and, and the thing is that, that I watched your uh, election uh, with uh, uh, Solomon Ortiz very carefully, and um, I saw that there was, and it's a full contact sport here in politics, there were strong political messages on each side. Uh, but interestingly, uh, you had commentaries or comentarios with uh, the Lopez family. I heard you every single day, uh, 15, 20, 30 yeah. minutes. And uh, I heard your uh, stance on immigration, health care, and all that. Can you summarize sort of your platform for the people out there that are listening right now? Because we will be playing this repeatedly. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it's basically, I think, you know, the buzzword or the campaign term where you boil it down into one word is common sense. And I, I look for common sense solutions to problems. And you know, you, you look at some of the big issues of the day and if you apply common sense to them, the answer comes to mind. Immigration is a great one that I don't think the rest of the country understands like South Texas. The Republicans really take uh, a beating as being, you know, anti-immigration or anti-immigrant. And I. I think a lot of that is they don't understand what it's like here on the ground in South Texas because most of the immigrants that I know, and I'm talking legal or illegal, are people who came to the United States not to cheat our welfare system, but to make a better life for themselves by, in the most part, you know, working hard and starting their own business. It's the same American dream the Anglo immigrants had back, you know, 50, 100 years ago. It, it, it's the same deal. And you know, I come across, my thought on immigration is, look, we've made it way too hard to get into this country for people who want to make a better life for themselves. We need to simplify the immigration system where if you can pass some sort of reasonable background check and if you can show you've got a job lined up and aren't going to be a burden on society, come on, we'd love to have you. We'd love to have you working. We'd love to have you uh, opening your own business, you know, your auto repair store, your restaurant, your little tienda, your hospital stand, whatever you want to do. Come on. This is how America was built. And I think a lot of people have lost track of that and say, well, you know, the immigrants are going to take jobs away from Americans. They're not. There's, there's plenty to go around. This is America, the land of plenty. There's and maybe these people everybody. will make a raspa stand or maybe make their own manufacturing business and employ other Americans. Ex exactly. You know, the Washington and the establishment likes to say, you know, evil corporations and evil businesses, you know, we, we can't cut them any breaks. I don't look at them as corporations or businesses. They're employers. They're the people who uh, give you a, a job and give you the opportunity to... Uh, work your way up. You know, you, you may start as a clerk in a store or you may start as the dishwasher in a restaurant, but you work hard and you save your money, you'll become the manager. You can open your own restaurant and be your own boss. That's the American dream and it's still alive today. The American dream is not sitting at home on the couch watching TV uh, and going to the grocery store and buying everything on a Lone Star card. Collecting benefits and, and I think that that uh, message that you have resonates with many Hispanics that don't want a handout, that are hardworking, that have the ethics. If you put uh, conservative values, pro-life, I mean, that's Hispanic culture, it, it Congressman Elect. That's a, okay. Two minutes. I like to give everybody the floor because I talk way too much. You know that. Uh, I want to. I want them to listen to you. The last couple of minutes. What do we expect from you and the service to District 27? That we from here to the Valley. Uh, what is your vision for South Texas? My vision is creating an environment that is friendly to everyone to start their own business and to succeed. Uh, and it's being available to the people and listen to the people. One of the complaints I heard about the previous congressman all the time was, well, I've called his office 20 times and they've never called back. You know, he, he never listens. He's never down in the district. My wife plans on staying here and I plan on coming back down to Corpus Christi and Brownsville as often as possible. I, I don't mind getting on the plane just for a couple of days on the weekends to do that. I'm looking forward to being the most communicative, in-touch congressman that you have ever known. And I, you can ask anybody that works into my office, the fastest way to uh, turn me from Congressman Farenthold into Congressman Raving Maniac is for somebody to tell me that their phone call wasn't returned or this email uh, didn't get answered. I, I, I'm, and I can tell you, 
I'm feeling bad right now. You know, I realize this show is playing time and time again, but we're taping just two days after the election. And the amount of email and the amount of phone calls I've gotten is huge. But I'm committed to making sure they're all responded to. Normally, I'd like to do it within 24 hours, but it's not happening right now. My goal is to be in touch, listen to what people have to say, and if I don't agree with them or if I can't help them, not being afraid to look them in the eye and saying, I want to help you out. Here's what I can do. Here's what I can't do. Here's why. Well, and, and finally, uh, we've got about half a minute left, but uh, what I wanted to say was there was this feeling, this perception that Nueces County and San Pat didn't matter. We got this perception and during the election, even if the, your former, your, your opponent said, even if he didn't take Nueces San Pat, the Valley would take care of him. What happened this election that was different? Nueces and San Patricio County that knew me because of my long term on the radio and my history here voted for me and in great numbers and that carried me in the valley. But it means I have a lot of work to do in the Rio Grande Valley so they can get to know Blake Ferenthold and I'd like to uh, win the entire district uh, next time around. Well with your permission I I'd like to uh, give you a copy of this and also you put it on your website, load it up and that way they at least get a, a, a snapshot. But I know you're pressed for time. Everything is just whirlwind. I want to thank you for coming on I and I hope that we can make you a permanent fixture about every quarter come on we interview you and it's an update to District 27 what is going on and, and addressing not only the Latin community but I think a lot of people are starting to watch KTMB that are not Hispanic it's growing yeah. uh, and I know that you optimized on that and got some votes so uh, congratulations uh, on your victory and thank you for stopping by it's my pleasure and I'll be here at least every quarter I appreciate that Blake Farenhold he has taken on District 27 uh, at a uh, quote unquote surprise victory but I think that he worked hard and uh, it was uh, a mandate, uh, at least in San Pat and Nueces County for change. And, um, and he is going to be campaigning hard in the Rio Grande Valley. And we'll be seeing a lot more of him. Thank you and God bless.